Hello lovelies, how are you all doing today? I hope you are well, uh, I am. It's another rainy day though. <laughs> I had promised myself um, a full week in the garden this week. You can do quite a lot in just one week, well as in five days, but no, weather forecast was wrong, we're back to rain, never mind. It gives me a chance to talk about something that's been sort of going through my mind a little bit over the last sort of two or three weeks, partly, <laughs> partly having read this wonderful book, Timeless Simplicity by John Lane. I will tag on my book review of it at the end of this, the card for it. Uh, yeah, it was very sort of thought prompting, thought provoking, that's the word. Plus, I've bought something in the meantime and that kind of, oh, the thoughts. So <laughs> today it's nothing to do with the garden or the weather. It's more about, I'm going to share with you some things that I've done over the years, which I hadn't really thought about the amount of money that it saved me, but I've done some maths and I was a bit fall off my chair, gobsmacked. So I thought, yeah, let's share those things today. Now, it, I, hadn't, I hadn't particularly thought about the money aspect of these things because I wasn't doing it because of the money. So look, yes, I am very frugal. I'm, and part of my frugality is because I don't have a big income coming in. So I don't have a lot of money, so I have to be really careful with my money and spend tiny. But that's been the case all my life. So even when I have been waged, I've still been a small spender. Because for me, so much of my frugality isn't about saving money. It's about saving the planet. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, sort of, you know what I mean? Uh, and I should just say right from the beginning, of course, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But I try in, in different ways to do what I can. So, so yeah, this, the, the stuff I'm going to talk about today, it's, you could almost say it's, I'm accidentally frugal because of being eco-centric, not ego-centric, eco-centric. Um, you know, folk always, okay, we'll get onto that in a second. I've got so many notes here because I don't want to forget anything. I've done some maths for us. Um, I've done some lists, I've done some research out in the high street, in the shops, and then some maths, and I've got some show and tells. Right, where do we start then? So, um, right, okay, let's start with this. I quite often use the example of the takeaway coffee in terms of being frugal. You know, don't have that takeaway coffee, put that money in your savings. And I've often said, look, okay, I know that foregoing one takeaway coffee every week, it's not, by the end of the year, going to pay off your mortgage. Of course it isn't. But it's more the idea that if that's your habit with the coffee, it has a ripple effect and it spreads to other parts of your spending so that you think, well, I'm not going to do my coffee. Hang on a minute, maybe I won't do that newspaper or that magazine. You get the idea, we've talked about this before. But in terms of then coming back to one of the questions I'm always asked is, yes, but how can you live on so little? Now, most people ask it in a really polite way, so I try to inform. And some people, they just don't understand how I can live on so little. And therefore they say, so you must be a liar. It's not possible. It is. Here I am, I'm the living proof. So just bear in mind little things, and this is what I'm going to talk about today, some swaps that you can do that I've been doing for years and years and years, and it's quite staggering how much I've saved over the years. But going back to that thing of the, um, the, the monthly shopping trolley, or weekly if you do your shopping weekly, there are so many things which are probably in the majority of shopping trolleys which simply aren't in mine, and some of them have never been in my shopping trolley. For example, I have never bought coffee, ever. 
I drank coffee as a kid when I was at home, when I was sort of 16, 17, but then when I left home at 18, I've been an independent adult for 35, 6, 7, 38, 38 years I've been an independent adult. And in all that time, I've never bought coffee. I don't buy tea. I have my um, peppermint, which is my preferred, and chamomile, my second preferred herbals. But a box of 20 herbal tea bags, well, it'll last me a year because I simply, I just don't do hot drinks. I'll have, um, you know, I'll have, <laughs> I'll have my water. Need it now. So yeah, my shopping trolley never contains coffee, it never has tea, it never contains milk or sugar or all those other things to do with your hot drinks. It never contains um, those processed breakfast cereals, da, 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 ad infinitum. So I know that for some people it's really hard to understand how I manage on so little, but I just, I... I simply, I live differently and I consume differently. That's that's all there is to it. Um, but coming on to the specifics of today, so bear in mind the idea of one takeaway coffee per week not had isn't going to pay off the mortgage or get you out of debt, whatever it is. But if that's the tip of the iceberg of the things you're not spending on, then soon you actually might have a little bit saved to pay off some of that debt on me. So, and it's kind of coming back to this as well, that the whole thing about my frugality is, yes, it's about not spending too much money because I don't have any. But more than that, and, and more than that for my entire life, it's been about being a more mindful consumer of of trying to tread lightly on this planet as I go. And like I said, I'm not perfect. There's always room for improvement, but I try really hard to, to be a mindful consumer and not be buying unnecessary stuff and thinking about landfill and all that stuff all the time. And one of the big things that I don't do a lot, there are some tiny instances of it, is I don't, tend to buy disposable stuff and it seems kind of mad to me that we, we would spend money on something which we're going to throw away. Why pay to throw away? That doesn't make sense to me. Ah! <laughs> um, that should be my, one of my mottos actually. Don't pay to throw away. So let me get my numbers ready for you. As an example, and this is just one example out of many I could give. Paper products. Just going to say from the outset, yes, I know I could swap over to cloth wipes for my bum. <laughs> However, I don't put the laundry on that often. It's That's one step too far for me. And that, that's, all, that's why I'm saying I'm not perfect and we go as far as we feel comfortable with. I don't want to use... At the moment, I'm not saying never, reusable personal hygiene bomb wipes and, you know, having, having a bucket of them in the bathroom for a week and a half at a time until I do the laundry. So I do use paper loo roll. But outside of that, let me have a little, little look at my list. One thing I've never, ever bought, I've never bought paper kitchen towel. Ever. I use, I brought some bits out to show you, and um, look, I mean it looks grubby, it's not, that's actually, it's clean from the cupboard, but obviously over time they, they do begin to look a bit grey and yuck, but it's not, it's, it smells clean, it's, it is clean, but yeah, I don't use any disposable kitchen paper towels, I, I, and I never have, hand on heart I can say I've never bought kitchen towels to have in my kitchen, Again, I don't understand why you would buy something to then throw it away. I'm going to come on to the cost of these as well, because there is a cost. That's okay. So yeah, um, kitchen towels, uh, dishcloth, knitted dishcloth. This was knitted for me. 
so no no kitchen paper towels so little spills and then for bigger spills i have um a few of my really old <laughs> this is this is from my nephew's junior school 2006 um yeah i just keep a few old tea towels I mean, it's pretty stained. I mean, again, this is clean. It's from the it's from the clean pile. But you can see, you see on the back. I don't know what that stain was, but I obviously mopped up something. That was probably sauce. So I have I have the tea towels for sort of bigger uh, mop ups, like a spill on the floor, and the little ones for washing up or for spill for small spills in the kitchen etc etc so yeah i've never bought kitchen paper towels i use cloth stuff fab what's the next on the list oh do i have one to hand to show you Just, that's something i need to buy um every time i sit down to eat I use a napkin, serviette, call it what you will. <laughs> no, I don't do it like that. But yeah, I, I use a napkin with every meal, literally every single meal. And sometimes even when, um, I was mentioning the other day, late in the evening, I'll sometimes chop up an apple, you know, slice it up and have it as a little snack as I'm reading. And I'll have my little napkin slash serviette with me. My fingers get a bit moist from the apple just a quick little wipe because i'm reading i have never bought paper napkins disposable paper napkins ever <laughs> they're just not ever on my agenda now i know that some people just don't use a serviette when they eat so that might be something you think well that's not going to affect my um that's not going to affect my shopping bill because i don't buy paper napkins but it would affect mine and I've included that in my numbers. What else? What else? Old towels. Ah, of course. <laughs> this one's getting really old. <laughs> right, this is one of my calf kids and I never use disposable tissues. I have on a couple of occasions when I've been so pearly, I, I'm going through loads of hankies but more to the point, I'm I had the flu once in my life, um, yeah, just once, it was all, I mean, I was, I was knocked out for about two or three weeks, um, and I just, I just couldn't get out of bed to do the laundry, so I ended up using a loo roll for blowing, but yeah, otherwise, never buy paper handkerchiefs, always use my cloth ones, this one is stay, I wish I'd had a, I wish I had a prettier one with me, um, today. And I've got tons of them over the years as, you know, Christmas presents, find them in charge. I'll come on to the money for that in a second. But yeah, so never, ever bought a box. I've never bought a box of paper tissues, nose tissues. I don't use, it's not a paper product, it's a cotton wool product, but I don't use cotton wool pads for makeup removing. I have reusable pads. And again, after a number of uses, they look, pretty i i've got white ones but they look pretty rank and gray i have about two years ago i bought some new ones they were on offer my old ones were threadbare but again so there are sometimes expenses but as a as a general rule with these disposable products i don't buy them We've got the point, haven't we? Have I gone through them all? Reusable cleansing pads, um, cloth, serviettes, napkins, kitchen spills, large and small, handkerchiefs for blowing my nose. I think that's it with the paper products. So having thought about it, I was thinking, wow, yeah, I've, I've just never bought any of that paper stuff. How much does all that stuff cost? I mean, I literally, <laughs> I honestly have no idea. Hang on. It's a chatty one. I'm probably going <clears> to <throat> need quite a few swigs. So yeah, I've never bought them. Don't know how much they are. So I went to a couple of the supermarkets near me just to get a rough idea. And it may be, yes, I'm sure there are places which sell them cheaper. I didn't 
I didn't look at Lidl for this because Lidl's way down the hill and I just didn't want to walk that far. So I checked out Tesco and Sainsbury's and they're much of a muchness that a box of tissues, you know, for nose blowing would be three quid. Kitchen roll, and it looks like you get two in a packet generally, also three quid. And then a packet of paper, napkins, serviettes, uh, £1.60 for 50 <clears throat> excuse me, and I suppose you could use, with the paper ones, you could maybe use one for a whole day, keep it from breakfast, lunch, supper, by then it'd probably be in rags, but that, yeah, £1.60. So I looked at those and I thought, right, well I would definitely get through a box of tissues in a month. I've, I've got my post-nasal drip. Probably, I'd probably get through a pack of the kitchen roll in a month. With the paper napkins, I thought, there's 50 in a packet. So I thought maybe I could get away with half a packet per month. So that would be three, six. So that would be six pounds 80 in a month just on tissues, kitchen roll and serviettes. £6.80 in a month. Over the course of a year, and this is where it starts to add up, that over the course of a year, now there may be some of you screaming at the screen saying, oh, you'd, ne you'd never get through a whole box, of, or you personally would not get through a whole box of tissues in a month. Or, you know, you wouldn't get through two kitchen rolls in a month. You'd never buy napkins, servits, whatever it is. So this is for me. This is what I think I would get through. So £6.80 a month works out at £81.60 per year. Now, um, obviously I've been an independent adult for 38 years. Yeah. One might say... So that over the course of my independent adult life so far, on paper products, I could have spent over £3,000. It's mind-boggling. Over three grand on stuff to blow and wipe and throw. Ah, it's mad, especially at serviettes. So actually, then I worked out what it would be for 20 years. So just in my little lifetime in this little home of mine here. Um, 20 years of buying tissues, kitchen roll and paper napkins for dabbing and mm, after a meal. In the last 20 years, by not buying those things, I have saved, or should I say not spent, £1,632. <laughs> it's mad, it's mad, isn't it? Now, Okay, I have spent money buying these things. So I bought these serviettes and I remember it. They were from Sainsbury's. Yep, Sainsbury's. Um, there were four of them and I think, I'm trying to remember, I think it was £10 for the four of them. With my handkerchiefs, and I have a lot. I probably have, probably have about 30, 30 handkerchiefs now. So yeah, if I ever get the flu again, I won't need to use loo roll. I've got enough hankies. I have had them as Christmas presents, birthday presents. I've picked them up in charity shops often. I mean, brand new, still in a box or still in a you know gift wrapping or whatever. So I've probably spent, gosh, it's hard. Maybe, maybe I've spent 30 quid on handkerchiefs in my life. And, and others gifted, so 30, 40. I've had these gifted to me, but otherwise, you know, at my pound shop, you can get four of these type of knitted kitchen cloths for a quid. Tea towels, again, gifts, and when they get really, really, really worn out, they become part of the cleaning kit. You could use offcuts of fabric. So I, I'm, I'm not gonna count this costing anything because this was, I think this was in a Christmas stocking from my nephew 18 years ago. Oh my goodness, he was so little. Um, 
I miss the little bit, the little one. Anyway, um, yeah, so, so maybe this has been 10, maybe 50 quid of spending at most. So 50 quid over the last 20 years, actually it goes back further. Take that off what I would have spent on paper products. That's still a saving of over £1,500 in the last 20 years. So, so it's like 75 quid a year. Now look, I accept that, you know, saving £1,500 over the course of 20 years, it doesn't seem like much, does it? Actually, it seems like more when you save 75 quid for the year. But that's just one part of my life. That's literally just the paper products that never go into my shopping trolley. So, you know, look, I don't want to... I know that a load of you are like me and that you never use disposable things or try not to. I'm not saying there's nothing disposable in my life. There are some things. There are some things to do with hygiene. Anyway, I know that a load of you, this is kind of, <laughs> you know, I'm taking calls to Newcastle with you, aren't I? But for some of you, especially those of you who are younger than me with a young family, maybe it's one of those things to think about to do some swaps is to say, okay, well, let's, Let's swap to paper, you know, napkins and serviettes at, at the dinner table. Let's maybe swap to these knitted cloths. I mean, they're cheap as chips in the kitchen and for spills. Especially those, I know that those of you with small kids, really small kids, you're forever wiping. Is there ever a surface in the house which stays clean for five minutes or unsticky for five minutes? Kids, like... What is it with kids? They have sticky stuff coming out the ends of their fingers. They're like little spidey people, aren't they? Sticky, sticky. Just sticky everywhere. But yeah, maybe it's, it, maybe it's one thing that you could make a simple swap on is to swap to knitted cloths like this for the kitchen for wipe-ups. I wonder how much you'd save in the year. Um... I mean, give it a go, give it a go. But, and the point is that maybe over the course of the year, maybe it only saves you five or 10 quid, but think about over the course of five or 10 years, think about over the course of your kids' lives until they leave home. You know, when you start to think about things over 10 years or 20 years, I mean, it kind of staggers me to think of 38 years of independent adult living, that's really scary. But it adds up. And like I said, that's just one, the paper stuff is just one tiny part of our lives. So if we do things like say, ah, oh, I'm going to cut down on my takeaway coffees and I'm going to swap all the paper products in my house for cloth products. Now, now we're going to start building some momentum. You never know. Right, there's a couple of other things. Um, ah, yes, I really want to let this as a show and tell. Sorry, I could see my phone flashing and um, it is a call I've been expecting I needed to answer. Having put the phone down, I suddenly also was thinking back to where we finished a, in your time a second ago about how much over my lifetime have I saved by not using disposable paper products? And I was suddenly thinking, but I've got no idea because I don't know about prices. How much have I saved over my lifetime by not drinking tea and coffee? Can someone do the maths? One of you who buys coffee, uh, do the maths. How much would it have cost me for 38 years if I'd had a cup of coffee in the morning and three cups of tea a day? <laughs> No, I want to do the maths. Oh, I love doing maths. Making these videos is just an excuse for me to do maths. Thank you for giving me the excuse. Right, now the other thing I wanted to mention today was, uh, it was something I brought up on Faceache recently. And, and again, it's one of those things where I kind of, I always assume that <laughs> everyone's like me, that we're all the same, we all live the same, but... Having mentioned this on Facesake, a couple of people did say, oh, that's a really good idea. So I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll share it. And it's so simple. And again, I know a ton of you will do this already. And I don't want to patronise anybody, but I'm sharing because a few people did say, oh, I'll give that a go. 
Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I love the charity shops, uh, thrift shops, I think you call them in North America. But yeah, I love popping in and out, What you know, especially if I can find stuff that I can then clean up a bit and sell on or, you know, for books for my shop, what have you. So I would say I'm in the charity shops. I do it, there's a circuit I do once a week. Um, and sometimes slightly further afield from where I am. But yeah, about once a week I do a bit of a circuit and I check them all out. Yay! Ostensibly for stuff for me to sell. But I also have a little mental list that's pretty much on the go. It's like a rolling list all the time. There's not a lot on that list, but I keep it in my mind. And it's for stuff for me where, where I know that something I currently own and use is on its last legs or preferably have it put it onto the list before it's on its last legs. So, for example, on my mental list right now, my mental list says two summer tops. <laughs> I know it's got two summer tops on the list because I've recently, well, lo towards the end of last summer, I had to ditch a couple of times. <laughs> it was just threadbare. Tops that were actually, if I moved too quickly, they were just ripping open because they are so threadbare. And also, if you think about how much time I spend outside in bright sunlight, you know, from gardening, that really, really weakens the fibres. Anyway, so my list, two summer tops. And until about two weeks ago, the list also had on it hoodie, <laughs> because the grey hoodie I've been wearing in the garden for five, six years or so, which I bought secondhand at a charity shop, is on its last legs. I mean, it's it's getting through, but I can still wear it. I'll still use it, but it's really, really getting raggedy now. So I put onto my list about six months ago, I put on the list hoodie. I had on the list a new crossbody bag I always use that crossbody bag like a, as a sort of handbag almost but and it's it's looking a bit dodgy <laughs> so anyway the point is before something completely collapses dies and goes to bag heaven or hoodie heaven or wherever it is I put it on my mental list so that as I'm out and about I'm always keeping an eye out for those of the bits and bobs that I need that I use but if I left it, if I didn't have that mental list and wasn't checking out my charity shops all the time, for example, that hoodie would just disintegrate completely and I'd, I'd look in the charity shops, there'd be nothing there, I'd have no choice but to go and buy one brand new for 25 quid. However, because I have this mental list on the go way in advance of something being completely broken, like the hoodie, it meant that a couple of weeks ago, finally after about six months, I saw a hoodie. I picked it up for six pounds. It's brand new, still had the swing tag in it. 25 quid, new. That's how I got the 25 pounds. So it's a bit big on me, a little bit big. I can turn the cost back. That's fine for the job it needs to do. Um, so I've managed to find a brand new, really thick, cosy, snuggly hoodie for £6. Instead of in a couple more months when my current hoodie dies completely, have to go out and spend 25 quid. So yes, I have spent £6. However, I could have needed to have spent an extra £19 on top of that if I'd left it to the last minute and there was no other option. So I have this rolling mental list way in advance of when I actually will need something. So the thing that I showed on Facebook, I'll show you guys now, is this item went onto my mental list about two years ago. <laughs> so sometimes it takes, it takes ages and ages and ages, but that's why it's about, it's always, the one thing about being frugal that I would say is you have to sort of have that be prepared attitude. Um, yeah.
be prepared, be a mender as well if you can. But the thing I'd had on my list for a couple of years was a new wallet. So my other wallet is just, it's just, just about doing the job still, but I could just, I knew it was going to disintegrate. So the other day I found myself second hand, but in almost brand new condition, this gorgeous wallet so you can see there's a zip section here for the coins and there's a section in there for cards and bits and pieces it's Kath Kidston I mean I'm not bothered about things having a label on it although this is gorgeous because look at the print it's boides boides um I don't know how much these retailed at because obviously Kath Kidston's closed now but I think they were probably about 25 pounds maybe i'm not sure but i picked this up for three pound <laughs> fifty i mean it's crazy it, i mean it's it's serious it's good as new condition i'll show you the inside there's not a lot in there but you can tell from the inside look how clean it is on the inside how much money have i got <laughs> that's to last the rest of the week I'll do me. I've done everything I need to do this week. So yeah, um, three pound fifty instead of, or was it thirty five? Does someone say it to me it was thirty five? Good. It doesn't matter. Let's say three pounds fifty instead of twenty five pounds. If I waited until my current wallet had completely died, if I then went to scour all the charity shops and there was nothing there, so I was forced to go and buy it new. Um, so yeah, great. So in the last couple of weeks, that's less than £10 spent on a hoodie and a new wallet, which if I'd been buying them new at last minute, um, would have cost me £50 or more. Just little tweaks, little changes to your habits. So have a, you know, and the thing is, when you do, for instance, with clothes, I think it's I think it's usually more apparent with clothes than anything else because we're always handling our clothes, aren't we? We we take things out of the washing basket to put them into the machine. We may not look at them too closely at that stage because it's all stinky stuff, isn't it? But as we take things out of the washing machines, we're taking them out of the laundry basket wet, and we're giving everything a flap before we hang it on the washing line or on the clothes horse. Those are the moments when we can think, or even just when we're wearing them to think, you know, like, you know, this seam here, this is where I, this is where I always really wear my clothes out, is these seams, and I guess it's because I'm always like, oh, doing stuff. When they get so threadbare that you can no longer stitch them together, or it's not really suitable for patching, whatever it is, have an awareness of things before it's, before it's ready to time to actually throw them out and give up the ghost. So that when you're out and about, you can keep an eye out. Make friends with your charity shops, but, there's a massive but here, there's a massive but here. <laughs> Big but to this, and that is, you need to be quite disciplined. <laughs> so if you are going in the charity shops every week to try and find a gorgeous Kath Kidston purse for £3.50, Put that blooming trinket down. You don't need the trinket. Yeah, so you have to be a bit disciplined. You know, it's, I think it's quite easy, isn't it? You're in a charity shop and everything's a five and you think, oh, that's so cheap. Yeah, grab, grab, grab. My version of frugal is not about grabbing tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff cheap. It's about minimising the stuff we own at all. Minimising all the spending. So yeah, if you're in a charity shop and you've got your mental list and you're looking around for it and you find yourself picking up something that's not on your list, you know the mantra by now. Have it in your hand and ask yourself, do I really need it? Do I really, really need it? And if it's, a, if it's another mug, but it's a funny mug, if it's another trinket, if it's another little... The answer, if the answer is no, just put it down, walk away. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's um, it's just one of my, I thought, let's let's share this as a habit today because I think it might help someone else. And um, if we can all help each other and, and encourage each other. And like I said, if this is 
My, my version of frugality is not about hauls, hauls, I even hate the word with a shopping haul. It's about, it's not about consuming as much stuff as you always did, but doing it on a smaller amount of money. It's about questioning our consumption in the first place. Do we really need it? If we don't, wave it goodbye. And if we do still, if we do still need it, can we swap it to something that's a bit longer lasting and more sustainable? Brilliant. Save yourself. What did I say? <laughs> Over one and a half thousand pounds in 20 years. 75 quid a year. That swap and save yourself 75 pounds a year. That's a no-brainer, isn't it? Yeah, consume less. Do some swaps if you, you know. And like I said, I don't do the loo roll swap. That's, that's one swap too far for me. Never say never. Maybe I'll do it in the future. I don't know, but... But for now, for me, no, that's too far. But this, all of this is doable. And this, having your mental list of, of what you need or what you might need or not might, what you are going to need in six to 12 months time, start looking now in those charity places so that you can hopefully get it for much less than buying new. Oh, there was something else. I'll, I, that, that can wait for another day. I think that's enough. Um, that's enough sharing and points made for today, isn't it? But look, I genuinely hope. I genuinely hope by sharing this kind of stuff that it it prompts ideas for folk, that it inspires folk to try slightly different things. Um, there will be some of you who are old hats with all of this, who've been doing this all their lives as well, who may have just been sitting here nodding. <laughs> thanks for just joining me for the company but yeah hopefully it's it's a few ideas and a bit of inspiration for others who are looking to both save a bit of money and save a little tiny corner of the planet as well maybe all right lovelies until the next one look after yourselves <clears throat> happy hunting <laughs> i'll see you all soon cheerio